Hello, Danila. How are you? Welcome to the Creative Insider podcast. Hi, Georgie. Thank you for, for inviting me. <laughs> uh, I was uh, thinking of inviting you now for a long time uh, because we met in Copenhagen, where you're based, uh, because you, you were already listening to the podcast. Yes, um, I'm a big fan. <laughs> thank you and uh but i didn't invite you because you're a fan i invited you because i think you, you have a very interesting story and because now you're doing some interesting stuff online too and uh you're very active as a designer and uh on different social media platforms so i think we have a lot of topics uh, like you moving to copenhagen you being part of the pro group of Chris Doe, you were doing <laughs> yeah. your new series. So I think we have a lot of very, very good uh, <laughs> topics to talk about. But uh, you can introduce yourself uh, briefly with your own words and tell everyone what are you doing and uh, yeah, who you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi to everyone. I'm uh, Danila Lampis. I'm, uh, I'm an architect based in Copenhagen. I'm Italian. I'm from Italy, from Sardinia um and i yeah i've been here already nine years and i i work as an architect in, i've been in a different offices architecture office here and uh, yeah that's it i'm working mostly with renovation and uh, transformation and um, i never work in italy and uh, i i i knew i i know better the danish rules than the italian one so it's uh, yeah that's it. <laughs> and you're like me with Denmark uh, as I am with Germany because I also grew up in Italy, studied exactly. in Italy and never worked there because this is like <laughs> a very common thing, unfortunately. Um, but I like how like you really um, say that you work in Denmark and Copenhagen with this like uh, effortless um, tone, like it's nothing so important. <laughs> in the meanwhile, uh, in the meanwhile, I think it's a dream for a lot of people to 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 get to work in in Scandinavia, and and it's a very hard thing to achieve because it's a very competitive environment because you have so many good offices, and uh, of course, uh, I've been there. I visit. It's a, a small country with a small population, um, so also probably hard to enter this kind of society and and be accepted yeah. mm. so i'm curious what was the path towards uh, this i mean we have already some conversations privately off record so you've been studying in italy which university then you had some internships around yeah. the world so what is the story how did you end up <laughs> in uh, denmark um actually it, it wasn't it wasn't supposed to end up in denmark uh, because um, I, yeah, as you say, as you mentioned, I applied during my studies for a internship. Um, it, it was called it, uh, Erasmus placement. It was a program from the Erasmus program, uh, but like not, you are not apply for studies, but you apply for uh, uh, being a practitioner and to practice as a intern in a, in an office. And I thought it was a really good. Uh, uh, opportunity um, to try because they, of course, they 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 give you a scholarship. They give you a scholar. I, they, I got a scholarship, and uh, and then I say, yeah, why not? I need to to know a bit more about the working environment in architecture. So I applied, and uh, I I got it in the sense that I got the. I, I went through the selection and I've been selected uh, together with my 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 partner that is also an architect here, and um, we decide to spread our CV and portfolio all around Europe. Um, so we got an answer from Amsterdam, from Rotterdam first. So we were supposed to go there, but at the last minute, the uh, Rotterdam stop because I was big fan of OMA, o OMA, and Rencolas. So. Um, then the the office unfortunately say that we they were not able anymore to host us. So the one week after, a small Danish office answered to us that they we were we were really welcome to come to them. And so I had no idea at the time where was Copenhagen, where was Denmark, and yeah, geographically, I, I mean, I remember I googled really fast where is this place. Um, 
And so I say, okay, I saw the, the nice picture from uh, New Hound, the, the colorful houses uh, in front of the canal. And I say, okay, it looks nice. So it should be fine. <laughs> and so we end up here uh, in Denmark. Uh, it was summer, it was really nice summer. Uh, and we had a great experience. At, at so, which office did you at which office did you end up and uh, from which university did, were you guys uh, applying? Yeah, we 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 were studying in uh, in Sardinia in Italy in Cagliari, the University of Architecture in Cagliari, and we applied and we got the we got accepted from uh, Let's and Gori uh, that now are part of another office, but I mean, they were a really small office at the time, but now they are really popular after 10 years, 12 years. Yeah. I, I think Cagliari is also the university in Italy where most presidents uh, have studied at. I'm not sure. That's why it's one of the okay. most. It says that, so Danila, maybe you have a chance one day to be <laughs> the, president, the president of Italy. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so how, how long did you stay at this first uh, first experience in Copenhagen? It was three months, um, really intense. And um, yeah, it was really nice. Uh, we did a competition uh, and uh, we learned a lot about the Danish design uh, competition process uh, and uh, yeah, the environment, uh, the architecture environment, the, the culture environment. Uh, yeah, we, it was really nice. And our bosses were really, really nice. Uh, they, they, they are teachers at the university, the Academy of Architecture here in Copenhagen. So it was really a pedagogical experience as well. So they were really generous in that sense. And uh, now that you have also several experiences afterwards uh, um, across different offices in Denmark, uh, you mentioned this approach to competitions, this approach to design, to architecture. Um, could you explain it a little bit? What is what is so uh, special about uh, this uh, approach and the design in that country? Because uh, as I mentioned before, and as if people have watched the YouTube channel know that we've been there, we did also some videos. And I can say that it's, it's extremely beautiful and well-designed, everything it's around like from the bakery to the coffee to the supermarket. Mm -hmm. I think it's very well designed. I don't think it's mm -hmm. so well maintained. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's but true. it's really well designed. So what is the mm -hmm. design approach in Denmark that makes the whole country and the culture of design there so special? Um, I think that my first impression at the time that I that was the decision also to come back. It was because I see the Danish um, approach to buildings and to ideas, to architecture, uh, I define it positive. In that sense, that is, um, there is a lot of, um, in the process of making design, there is a lot of um, experimentation ideas that are coming through and is always, um, of course, uh, I idealize a bit, but for me it was, a. Uh, the, the words that arrives often after was like positive and joyful. And Denmark, as I say, is a small country and also the economy is a bit different when it's a small country. So um, the economy is quite strong. So in that sense, probably the design reflects also that, that part. Um, and yeah, and the approach to, to competition was always about uh, using your brain, your architect brain and your creative brain um, every minute. So it was like, yeah, let's try this, let's try that. And uh, uh, let's make a visualization really fast and let's sketch. So for me, as a, as a young student or, you know, a student in the university where um, the approach was really OK, but be careful if you test these ideas, be careful because there are some kind of consequences. So it was always like a really um, uh, strict and uh, not so open and and joyful uh, in the in the process. In I mean, process wise, and so that that was really fantastic. And to to learn that and to be like free to test and test and test and uh, and that was a, what I I really like it. Uh, of course, then when you do when when you have to do the real work with real client, you don't have so much time to test in that way but still um when you are a junior architect and uh, you have the possibility to work in competition it's a really good experience 
So basically being more uh, brave and don't put yourself like those limits. Just experiment, propose also some stuff that are more avant-garde, let's say, and and then... But um, I'm curious also, what do you, a lot of those designs end up winning in, in Denmark. Um, are also the clients more open or the people that are building in Denmark more open to these new ideas? Um, I think it's also maybe if they build it in Denmark, it's sort of a marketing stunt for the whole country culture because I was um, learning a little bit more about um, the Copenhagen, that ski slope that was designed in Copenhagen. And uh, uh, they did it in a way that um, they wanted to learn by doing it, but also use it as a marketing stunt for other countries that want to build a power plant so that they can come back to Denmark. So is it also this part of the architecture thing that people build it so that abroad everybody sees it was built there and they're kind of amazed and want the same thing in their own country? Yeah, I agree with what you say. I've never been in in offices like you you mentioned the project from Big, but I've never been in these kind of offices that... Um, that make this spectacular architecture. Um, I've been always in offices that works with uh, local clients with more uh, like pragmatic project in that sense. But yeah, I can observe from after being here a lot of years, I can observe that um, Denmark is a small country as well. And so uh, the design and the architecture is one of their um, um, one of the their the strengths to sell outside and in that sense um, offices can find work outside because of what they sell uh, and what they build here so yeah i agree and a lot of project has uh, a really strong um, design concept but also a really strong uh, marketing concept behind um, and and that's why also Denmark became so popular in the last 10 years about architecture, starting from big, but now there are a lot of offices that have been known uh, all around the world and they sell that. They sell their um, they, 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 they skills in, uh, in design and uh, architecture. And the second thing is that, yeah, sometimes there are also clients that here, they want to build uh, good architecture. And so, there is a kind of respect and a, a knowledge of the role of the architect in that sense. So that's also a plus that probably, I don't want to say that in my country in Italy is a bit different, but yeah, the, the role of the architect is is um, is a bit, I mean, in the societies is seen a, a bit different from Denmark compared to Italy, let's say. Yeah, definitely. And I think in Germany also architects are very, well respected and always asked when decisions are made but i think that also um, clients are a little bit more traditional and and they are like a little bit scared of doing something new because that can lead to costs explosions mm -hmm. because uh, we have um, probably the strictest rules about several things in Germany mm -hmm. and uh, many things that you are able to do in Denmark, you wouldn't be able to do in Germany or allowed to do. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one of the difference that I think uh, it's, uh, it's a little interesting. Um, I've been always a little bit interested by German architecture, why it's so traditional. And the meanwhile, other design industries, like for example, the car design industry, they make mm -hmm. always the coolest thing. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but yeah. in this other in this other field, they are a little bit more traditional. Um, but well, each this... country each country has a, their own strengths. I agree. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I have said that many times that I think, for example, the Italian approach, it's more like on passion. Everybody it's, that are successful, they are like craftsmen that really love their craft and they will um, do it despite the difficulties. For example, also Ferrari, if you think uh, mm -hmm. Enzo was just working for Alfa Romeo and he was really passionate about racing mm -hmm. and he had this very small workshop that ended up being successful. And uh, in the meanwhile, in the north of Europe, it's more based on organization, streamline, yeah. uh, improvement, constant development, uh, 
uh yeah so it's uh but two it's two ap- two approaches that di- different approaches but they lead to similar results when successful um but that was your first experience as um as an intern and everybody knows that getting an internship especially with uh uh with the support of the erasmus program it's a little bit easier uh not yeah. to underestimate your achievement yeah. But we, we all know that it's way harder to get a job in Denmark yeah. once you want to get the real job as an architect. So what was yeah. your path after you your first experience? You went back to Italy. What mm-hmm. happened afterwards? Yeah, uh, during actually there is a step that one uh, we finished the internship in, uh, in, in Copenhagen. And at the same time, I was even more uh, curious to test something else and we apply for the same type of program in uh, in the US so we have been uh, after Copenhagen we have been straight to New York three months and then there was a completely shift and completely two worlds two different worlds so I said you, okay. you have had a really really <laughs> sad career so far you went to Copenhagen in New York probably <laughs> yeah but <laughs> like, like the but, dream yeah. cities for everyone <laughs> yeah but yeah it, yeah it's it's yeah, exactly. Maybe from outside it looks like the dream city and so on, but then uh, actually it was quite New York was quite a shock, a cultural shock, even more than Danish one. But yeah, but so we 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 were back and I I got the I, the degree. I became an architect, and then I really wanted to come back to Denmark. That was my decision. That 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 was that. So I did everyone I could because um, moving here was quite expensive. And so I decided to find another postgraduate uh, program. And so I got another... But you said New York was shocking. In which way was shocking for you? Why did (laughs) you... You went three months, three months you stayed in New York, right? Yeah, three months. Uh, It was... uh, so it tell was... us more about New York. We want to know everything. It's called the Creative <laughs> um, Insider. We want to know yeah, all the I back ne- yeah. backstage things. <laughs> um, they, okay, the office where I, where we were again, it was not the huge, famous one, fancy. With it, we were in a really small office, super small. Right, um, the, the, our boss was a Spanish woman, uh, moved to to USA, and he has the office. Like every every morning, we see the Empire State Building in our like from our. And it was like for I was like whoa, and uh, he had she had her office and her house. She has a loft, you know this 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 kind of a dream, you know American dream uh, scenario. But then the work was so practical. I mean, I've been in building sites and with her and I did details. So it was totally another kind of experience, the other side of making architecture. And um, so New York was super, I mean, it's a difficult city in the sense that um, everyone is running, the city is always busy and there is no place to like Copenhagen to stay still and to stay in silence and to observe. So it was a totally completely another world and it was really competitive, in, even in, more. In which in part New of York. The, in which part of the city did you live? I lived uh, in the close to the 14th street, uh, really, really in the center, really, really, really in the, in the center. city. Yeah. Some small room or you share the flat with someone because I know in <laughs> In New yeah. York, it's so expensive that it's so hard to like even get something yeah. that's payable. Uh, to be honest, we start we we booked an hotel like um, an hotel that uh, allowed people to stay longer than one week. It was like a room, like you can rent a room or a double a room for two. And I booked it from Italy, and so I gave the deposit to them from Italy, and it was like you never know. But then we arrived there in the middle of the city in the night, and uh, uh, it was like a movie. I mean, uh, I was so scared that someone could enter in our room and clean us. I need to be honest. <laughs> so the first night, I cried all night. Yeah, I cried all night because I could see, you know, the hallway and all the rooms facing the hallway and people passing through. I say, okay, now I will, I will die here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm for sure and, and, and here so, you are <laughs> yeah i cry all night i say okay i will fly back to italy the day after that's the, that's the plan but then um 
because the room was super small, it was so expensive. And, and so we decided to ch change the room in a bigger room. So it was a bit more hair and, and facing the street. It was a bit more, I mean, it was better. And fortunately, so we changed the room, but our scholarship was gone in the rent. I mean, we couldn't aff afford anything else than pay the rent for. for but did you, there. did you get some money from the lady that you were working for? No, no, no. No. Ah, okay. No, uh, we got a scholarship uh, as well, uh, but still, um, yeah, it was super expensive, and our saving were like there on living and eating, and that's it. <laughs> I have a personal question that I'm really curious. Uh, was it very hard to adapt to the American measures because we use meters ah, and they use yeah. all the other things? Yeah, and they to use, me it's um... so complicated because they <laughs> yeah. don't, they're not decimal. They're like I don't know, goes in fractions or yeah. I don't know. You probably know better than me, but it, was it yeah. so complicated to switch mind or it was quite quick? You know what? No, I I I did I like forgot about that detail. But yeah, I remember that I had um uh, like like a scalimeter i always call it the one that you use to measure on the paper um like a ruler yeah yeah but it's not like a ruler it's a ruler with with scales already oh, okay yeah. Yeah, okay yeah yeah with um, scales yeah yeah i know what okay. you mean yeah so that helps a lot um but the drawings i have to adapt all the drawings to the dimension but yeah i don't remember probably i use just the google converter to to make it a bit more easier so yeah yeah i mean Mm. maybe the first month yeah i i forgot this little detail uh, that that you are right but yeah it, i did have so much problems in that sense um no i don't remember but yeah I, it, there was a lot of tools that helped me to yeah i needed to do something small for someone in the us and for me it was so complicated because i know standard <laughs> measures by now like if i know uh for example drywall i know it's 12 centimeters uh, five or if it's mm -mm, thicker mm -mm. I know by how much it's gonna be thicker <laughs> and uh, yeah. when it's like in the American measurements I was like what the hell am I doing <laughs> and yeah. I think they have like different methods of measuring it's just a mess I don't know I have yeah, to I um, somebody <laughs> has to do a tutorial on YouTube how to adapt to American <laughs> yeah. measures um so there it was not the dream that you it was rather yeah, not a nightmare, I mean, it was, but... Yeah, no, I mean, it was interesting, an uh, interesting experience. But, yeah, but, but not uh, your thing. <laughs> no. And, and so, so you... yeah, and so we, I was back to, to Italy again, and uh, I got uh, the, the degree, I became an architect, and then I wanted to come back to Denmark. I got a new scholarship, uh, and um, uh, I remember that this scholarship was about... Uh, I, I search a lot, a lot of possibilities. And this one was called um, Erasmus placement, something like that for young entrepreneurs. Basically the program was about to be inside a company and learn how to start a company. So in my case, my application was about, yeah, I want to start my own office in the future and I want to come back to Denmark to learn from Danish office, how to start, but it was just an excuse to come back in. Yeah. And, uh, and so they support me six months that time. So it was a six month scholarship. And I remember I prepared a long list of offices to, because I need to propose myself to be inside them and to be accepted um, with this program. And so I remember I, I prepared a long list of Danish offices that I like. I started with the first one. I sent out the application. I sent it to the second one that was uh, Yaya Architecta. And so I got an answer after the second one and I was prepared with a long list. I said, okay, the second one went, went through posit uh, like in a positive way. So uh, it was December and in March, I just moved to Copenhagen. But you, I mean, Yaya is now a very established company also in international level. They're very, very popular, yeah. very, very uh, winning projects, winning awards. So how was uh, going back there? What were your tasks? Did you actually learn how to start a, start a company? <laughs> yeah, actually, not really, because um, Judge at the time uh, uh, was quite active. 
um, they won a lot of competitions. It was really vibrant environment. Um, so I was there as a junior architect with, together with other uh, junior architects. So there was a lot to do. And uh, I've been involved in competitions. So um, I learned so much about how to present competition professionally. And they were in the, the top level. They had the top level um, niveau, uh, like, uh, like level. level. To, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, they, 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 they were at the time uh, and today still, they are really, really uh, good architects and also really good on presenting materials um, like visualization, uh, um, uh, diagrams, uh, explain the concepts. I mean, they, I learned really, really a lot just observe well, them can you can you share what are your observation and what are your thoughts about what is their way of presenting the project that makes it so special yeah. or so much better than the rest um for example there was there was a um, dedicated team that from the beginning that they, they got a competition uh, um like uh, a task i mean the description of the competition. the brief the competition the brief, brief. The competition brief, thank you. The competition brief, there was from the beginning someone uh, close to the partners that started directly with the 3D and uh, um, making like a sketch of the visualization in the sense that they already know from the beginning how to visualize the project. I mean, even without the project itself ready, they know how to present. This is we need to plan, yeah, the planning, the planning part was super important from the beginning. So we plan to do this diagram, this diagram, this diagram, and the, visualiz the visualization in that way, the visualization that showed that way. And so it was everything planned from the beginning because they, they did competition in a row. I mean, they were really into competitions. And so, partners uh, takes care of the concept and most of the time they they weren't alone in Denmark is really uh, in Denmark I, I believe everywhere it's really popular to join competition together with other offices so they can match um, and they can uh, like up level the the project and the the team skills uh, with different like landscape architects architects or young architects so they can join the competition together to achieve the best results and also to to be good also in the front of the clients we have those skills that you know they are diverse and so partners um, uh, develop concepts together with the senior architects and there were a lot of pin-up uh, conversation every week uh, there was this pin up conversation and everyone set up uh, the ideas on the walls and there were discussions. So there was a lot of um, um, like a like a, a university environment. Um, so it, and everyone was involved. Interns, senior architects, junior architects, everywhere were involved in the project. And so um, the competition was about maybe one month. Uh, it took one month more or less to prepare everyone everything and so um the 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 level of details of the the drawings the presentation and everything that was prepared for the panel for the for the boards to to deliver to the the project was super high level um Photoshop visualization, Photoshop details. Uh, um, yeah, everything was in place. It was, was amazing to observe this process. It was amazing, it was amazing. And actually that time we were together with other colleagues that we, we used to join competition by ourselves outside the, the offices. And I applied the same type of um, process and uh, working method into the competition that we did by with my colleagues, for example, by ourselves. Oh, so you was, did like uh, a, next to the, your work, also an external competition. Yeah. And, and yeah. what were your tasks in this process? What did you, what did you need to do? Were you in charge of Photoshop or planning or what was Yeah, Ajada, Ajada, I mean, you mean, yeah. you mean? Yeah, yeah I was um, in the, I was making uh, plans uh, so develop plans and concept, uh, but also 
um, retouch uh, visualizations of Photoshop. I learned a lot of tricks in Photoshop, how to make this nice uh, moods uh, uh, and like atmosphere. It, it was it was really a really huge uh, learning uh, opportunity for me. Yeah. Perfect. Nice. And then you stay there at um, I don't know what is the Danish pronunciation. I call them Yaya Architects for um, six months. You said. Yeah. Yeah. And after six that... months. After that, uh, they say that they were not um, able to hire me. So I say, yeah, it's perfect. It, it doesn't matter. It, it's okay. So I apply to another office, but uh, um, I. I went in burnout. Uh, I mean, I got burnout totally because the um, um, changing country and the expectations uh, from from myself and from Denmark were really high, and um, those expectations was really was what weren't really in place. So, especially the communication, because I I come to Denmark with the idea that I could talk just English. And uh, that's not true. Um, uh, here, the official language is Danish. And uh, if you want to work uh, with architecture and in general, if you want to understand and to be invited into the society, the language is one of the first steps. So for me, it was like a, a really big door in the face. And uh, yeah, I, I got burned out and I had to stop. Um, so I just took a break from architecture that time and uh, yeah, I just tried to be relaxed and to, yeah, probably to grow uh, a bit. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the story. I mean, it's, it wasn't really easy um, at the beginning. So you were, and, so you moved to this new office uh, afterwards? That was a little bit more slower pace, so to say. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there was not so. Um, it was, it was a small office. It was not really uh, active as Jaja. It was a totally another environment, and um, and it probably I was disappointed a bit uh, at that time. But mo mostly because I had really high expectation by myself and by the by Denmark. I mean. But what um, were your expectations? Did you imagine like becoming now the yeah. artist star or just no, being, no. what were the no. expectations? Uh, the expectation was about to, uh, in general, what, what was about to be an architect in really broad expectation. And uh, I faced it, the, the truth that is not a, a happy heaven sometimes. It's, it's, a, it's, it's work. I mean, to be an architect is, is a service. Is, to deliver work and project that sometimes is not fun as we thought and uh, that that's it and and especially the culture difference are something that i need i had to face the time uh, especially with the language and also um, yeah yeah personal connections complete are completely different yeah. in italy mm -hmm. like it's already so much different in germany i can imagine that it's even more different in denmark because the i think the alps which are the mountains that divide italy from the north part of europe is where really culture changed a lot and um people are more close to different interconnections mm. um there is a little bit of lack of like people don't do so many spontaneous things mm. uh, so i think it can be a little bit uh hard in the beginning after until you understand uh, yeah. the culture but um was it like after you had these experiences um first the first experience then new york then yaya architects uh, and then you moved moving to these other offices to this other office was it quite easier because you had this background and did um, you learn some danish before doing it no, no, I, I was still uh, working in uh, in English and uh, I started school, Danish uh, language school, just uh, during after my burnout, let's say, uh, because I understood that was super important to learn Danish. And um, and also it was 
I mean, if you know the language, it was much easier to get a job. At that time, it was 2014 and 15. There was not really a good time for Denmark. It was a kind of crisis, economic crisis again. So um, job position for architects was even more less and less. And uh, so, I mean, there was, uh, yeah, it, it was kind of difficult also for me to find a, to find a job, to be honest. But then yeah. I decided that I really, I mean, I did some other kind of job to just to break a bit, just to have a break from the architecture world. But then I need, it was, I mean, it's my job, it's my passion, so I need to come back. And I decided to apply to offices as an intern again. So I had the possibility to do four weeks uh, internship for free. And so I decided to do that. So I had more and more experience and in, uh, in my CV from Danish offices. And so I say, OK, you don't want me. I create my own opportunity. And so even if it's for free, I don't care. Uh, I need to be there. Um, yeah. Some, I had to start from some, some place. For sure. Um, and um, was there like, was there a period of time? So now after all this experience, uh, you, you have kind of settled uh, in Denmark. You're already nine, nine years there. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, as I said, I know you through the podcast because you started listening to it and then we talked a little bit and uh, you're very, very active um, online with meaningful content, in my opinion, because also you share a lot about uh, your process, your architecture ideas, your thoughts. Um, and I'm curious about uh, you are also as many of the designers that are out there, me included, um, very inspired also by different channels as the one of the, the future from Chris Doe. And you also joined uh, the um, pro pro group, mm -hmm. um, which is this sort of a mentoring group. I don't know. You can explain it better. Yeah, it is. I'm, yeah. I'm curious. Why did you decide to to start it, to be mm -hmm. part of it? What was the idea? Was that actually initial idea of, of starting your own office still there in your head? Mm -hmm. And uh, what is your experience? Because uh, online you can find some controversy as with everyone doing something online about Chris Doe and people saying like <laughs> he's a snake oil seller, that he's just ripping off <laughs> money from people that, uh, I don't know, needs a little bit of self-esteem or motivation. I don't know. So <laughs> I wanted to ask you about this because I think it's a lot of people know about Chris, know about this pro group, and they will be curious to know. Yeah, uh, for sure. I follow the pro group, the future from like maybe long, maybe 2015, 2016, just by chance, because I found it uh, through another Italian podcast that they were suggested Chris way of teaching through the um, uh, when he made this kind of uh, scenes uh, like uh, how is called it this um yeah this like had, the drawing uh, board or no not the drawing board it was about uh, his uh his uh he's the client and someone else is doing the oh yeah the yeah creative. like uh role, like, uh, role playing role he playing yes role the playing, role yeah. playing. exactly the role playing and I say hmm, okay let's see and actually um i mean uh, i i have a good opinion of him and uh and i i mean he's he's really making into the um, into the world some good content i mean i i believe that if you are smart enough to understand what what is going through his his process and you can apply some of them into your process uh, of making uh, you know business or creativity in general i think that there is gold somehow in that in what he's doing and the youtube thing was everything is free and even the free content are really high value content content i i need to be honest then I, I bought some also some of the, their courses and their courses are more directed to designers, not to architects. And then I found that some of something could be applied also to architecture and to business of architecture. So I, I mean, I was quite fascinated, but not because of this product in general. It's because the mindset is maybe it's because it's American and 
there is this way of is is also an immigrant in America because it's a second generation immigrant, I believe. Um, and so um, the mindset that he has of uh, making stuff, hard work, uh, making uh, creatively, um, making your life in a creative way, I I find really attractive. And um, and it is a thing that here in Europe we don't have. Because in Europe, we are really traditional about some things. And the, the American point of view is always a bit more forward, I believe. So there were some things that attract me. Then I got, um, I followed them a lot. And then I got an offer from them to be part of the pro group with a um, with, um, half price. So I say, OK, let's try. Uh, because I follow them, uh, let's try. Um, I tried and I had access to the catalog of the old calls from the pro group, uh, like from 2015. And it was like, I mean, thousand minutes of calls, uh, internal pro group calls, like mentorship. And uh, um, I mean, there was like lectures, lecture about how to do stuff really practical, not just the blah, blah was really practical steps and i tried to apply some of those lectures and they work it i mean they, there was something amazing that i mean it really stimulated and my brain start to work differently and i start to say oh okay i can do that i can do that so the good thing about the pro group is not just about him uh, because him he is uh, the thing that uh, the pro group members say a lot is say i join the pro group because of you chris but i stay because of the family of the pro group of, i mean i stayed because of the others creatives that are there so having creatives from all around the world with different background different points of view different uh, stories and and different business experience it opens a lot of your brain uh, windows let's say and if you want to to get the most from the pro group, you can just take these uh, lectures and talks and uh, you know uh, calls and apply them into your world. I, I think that's the, the beautiful things um, about be part of that. Am I still part of that? Um, so um, you got a lot of inspiration. That's that's the good thing. That maybe you don't have it in other places, just watching passive some other social media posts or whatever. So it's, it's a font of inspiration for me. And um, I'm curious what you mentioned that you've watched some of his lectures or some of his calls and there are practical advice that you have applied yourself and they have worked. What are those some was something that's on the top of your mind that you have heard there put yeah. in practice and has worked yeah for example um uh he talked a lot about the um, uh, the expertise how to be an expert because in a business to run a successful business somehow you need to specialize and to be in the top of mind of your clients let's say because you are specialized in that thing so they can remember you because of that and in that sense, uh, you can run a successful business in that sense, in that way. So he talked a lot about this expertise and how also to borrow expertise. So, uh, and how to show your face by borrowing expertise. And I, I, I say, okay, that's really interesting. So if I want to, to, to be um, helpful to my colleagues, maybe that are starting university or they are starting architecture, uh, the world of architecture, how can I be helpful? Because I like to be helpful. And so I don't like to just stay on social media, just posting work without meaning. I mean, how can I be really helpful? So I try to apply what is doing with us to the architect world. So I try to, you know, to show the process, uh, understand, uh, you know, just show as much as I can. And that worked a lot because somehow 
hear my colleagues see me in a positive way as well because I like to share and uh, I'm helpful and uh, you know you can show your personality in that way as well and then come also the idea for the LinkedIn lives um, and once he say a thing once he say you you could provide something that is uh, helpful that is on trend and that as a kind of that shows some kind of yet your expertise so it's a kind of triangle one so it has to be in trend it has to be helpful and needs to show your expertise and so i say okay i can join these three things um what is going on now in architecture there is a lot of here in denmark there is a lot of talk about sustainability there is a lot of new rules that are coming on with the sustainability and then uh, there is a lack of lack of uh, knowledge in that sense for young architects like me because i was the first one that i lack knowledge in that sense then i say okay it needs to be helpful so how can i be helpful in that sense um maybe i should just uh, invite someone that is more expert than me and and ask them to to show practical stuff you know just not to talk but to be really practical and then expertise how can i match my expertise with the topic uh, that I'm going to to talk about. So in that, I mean, that combination, it was inspired by him, but somehow it worked um, because I, I can see that it's, it's quite appreciate the the yeah, the life that I'm doing and from yeah, from colleagues, from also senior architects. So I think that it's nice to do something different and uh, and just to be helpful in that way. So that's briefly what I can share. <laughs> and um, yeah, you're serious. That's that's also one of the things that for me, it's interesting. I'm so happy that um, you have started doing something like that. And uh, also when I when I saw you starting doing it, I, I offered myself to to share my knowledge about how to how to stream online, because I know that it can be quite frustrating. And, yeah. Uh, time uh, time consuming to understand um, how to do it it's not so mm -hmm. complicated but finding the right tools it can be time consuming that for sure um, so you started them this series on LinkedIn about sustainability in architecture uh, I've managed to follow some of the some of the episodes I didn't but you can always re-watch the episodes because they stay on yeah. LinkedIn um, so did you pick LinkedIn exactly uh, because it's more like the, let's say, social media for professional experts than rather just being like an entertaining yeah. social? Yeah. And, and also you do it um, because you still have some in, is aspiration to become, um, to build maybe your own company or because you have you want to for example my girlfriend Desi read did a video about this a few days ago about this career resilience so that you somehow cannot lay back on your career because with time if you don't you constantly know. improve mm -hmm. you will be obsolete and then you're yeah it's gonna be sounding ugly but you're not useful anymore so <laughs> you're gonna just get um refused so what is the what is what was your why why did you yeah. want to do it the why was also connected to the pro group because uh, internally on the pro group uh, chris uh, always uh, challenged us to test to test things and one of these new thing was linkedin like after instagram it linkedin was the next social media that could position yourself into the professional world so that was the challenge from the pro group to start something on LinkedIn. And uh, um, I choose LinkedIn because in Denmark is really popular, is even more popular than Instagram. So everyone is there. So for me, I want to position myself in the Danish market. So that makes sense for me to stay there. And connected to your partner for the podcast, uh, exactly. When she published that, that video, I say, yes, Exactly. That's the resilience that we need to build, not just as a um, professional, they want to start their own company, but as a 
professional itself if you want to be employee in another employed in another company maybe so yeah exactly maybe it was a bit unconscious but yeah that was the point i i've been through really difficult time finding a job here because you know the process is always difficult but so i i thought what can i do to to be known in another ways that is not just through a cv that companies just got together with 100 talented architects what can i do to do to differentiate myself with my in my own way that i feel comfortable and with my own personality and also with something that is helpful and also that is connected to my to my work so yeah that that was exactly that what desiree published last time was perf in a perfect time that was exactly the meaning also and and of course i miss also clarity about the sustainability topic i miss clarity and i miss knowledge that is is a knowledge that we are still building up it's not totally um, clear now how to do in the next 10 years we are building that and so yeah that that was the main why <laughs> yeah i think that's a great idea because it's uh, gonna be the next big thing in architecture and by having this series you provide um as you said value to the people who are listening but also you learn a lot because you're in touch with these people and then um if someone then will be looking for someone in that field just because you provide this stuff for free for them they'll think about you and they say well danila did that work let's get in touch with her even if we need to contact other people she has Mm -hmm. um that kind of um as you said expertise these connections um, and uh it's really fascinating how you can build this network online for example i've never been living in denmark but i know so many people <laughs> in denmark now yeah and then i come over and then i meet them and uh and if you have i think mini I, if you have meaningful conversations with people mm -hmm. uh it's not about you it's about them or it's about something that it's bigger than than you people are so happy and they feel so connected afterwards yeah. just for the simple we don't have that conversations uh in life like in person so much anymore mm -mm. and um i'm always this was my idea that i wanted to start being part of a network of conversations about design and i didn't want to be like my goal is maybe someone else can do it better but at least if somebody gets inspired by starting it from me i'll be happy and uh, i hope they will get even more successful in what they do and the reality is that the way you're gonna do one thing it's not gonna be the way i'm gonna do the same thing so you cannot really um copy each other yeah, but, but exactly, but like what well, exactly? Sorry if I interrupt you. Exactly what you say because I saw, I, I, I see you doing that, and if I'm uh, in a difficult time, maybe that I don't feel, uh, I feel insecure like I've been in the past. If I have some reference and some people that like me that are doing, um, that are doing stuff that are not really comfortable to do because stay on video, stay on camera and show your face. I mean, it's not always with your not with your not native language, even even worse. So, but if and that's what happened to me. I saw another architect that is not Italian, but is doing that in Italian with the Italian that is not perfect, but still she's doing that. And uh, and I say, okay, I can do it in another country. Maybe if if my language is not perfect 100% but I got inspired and I grow and so why not as you say why not uh, not inspire someone else to be happier and you know to create meaningful connection as you say because at the end of the day we could be super uh, professional and so on but we miss connection right now and uh, we miss communities and we miss people like us to hang out so it's um, yeah is the important part right now i guess <laughs> i have always this um thought in my mind for example uh, stand-up comedians i listen to a lot of their podcasts 
And um, a lot of the stand-up comedians that are not on TV, like on the late night shows, there are so many. Um, they have created this network of podcasts because also they had the advantage that Joe Rogan is a comedian and he has the biggest podcast, so he would invite them. And mm-hmm. so he would promote them and then he would also invite them to start their own podcast. And now they have this environment, they are completely independent from TV or from the exactly. traditional media, from the gatekeepers. Yeah. And I think that designers should stop being a snobby and mm-hmm. present work in a snobby way as it's presented at universities where, I don't know, there are particular academies where these things go on and on uh, in a very, for me, non-constructive way. Mm-hmm. And the different designers should start their online presence in a meaningful way, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on TikTok, whether it's on Instagram, whatever you feel like doing. it. For example, as you said, being on camera it's not so easy so in the beginning i started doing it just audio and Mm -hmm. hearing my voice was also very unpleasant in the beginning (laughs) but now i'm very used to it it sounds like another person talking yeah yeah. you sort of get detached from your own self and um i think it's so important and that people start do it even if they don't have a, an idea for a new format they can start copying someone and just yeah. they will do it in a different way so yeah. uh, and then we can start inviting each other and take having conversations and promoting books promoting speeches organized conferences but it it can be only if a whole tribe starts doing it and not only and i think English is the language because it's something that unifies different um, different nations. And, and I think it's also an advantage doing it from mm-hmm. Europe because still a lot of Americans listen. And for, their, for them, it's probably more interesting because it's a different point of view. It's not like the American point of view. No, and exactly. um, I think it's, it's very important to, to, to shift this mentality that design is something something i don't know abstract or crazy Mm -hmm. the goal it's making cool things and make them happen in a economically sustainable way and also now in the environmental sustainable way this is what i what i think um so you you have had now five no four guests four episodes yeah, the first one, the the good thing or starting thing, the first time, the the first one, I totally mess up, the first one. But still, there is a recording at least. Then uh, from the second one, I learned, I learned a lot how to do it. But, <laughs> but this yeah. is this is normal. You have to do. I think also it's some something that Chris Doe re- repeats a lot. Yeah. You have to do fifty in order to start with the good ones. I had to do hundred, yeah. and I'm still learning. Uh, because you learn they are always you never stop yeah. learning that's the exactly. thing mm-hmm. but who did you invite so far so they were also international guests not from yeah yeah i i i i want i contact a lot of people and to be honest i at one point i say okay i try to contact them if they can't it's okay i mean i'm not really i don't take personally if it's a no it's it's really fine and so I started to contact, um, of course, people that make sense to have. And the one, the first one was um, uh, an architect, uh, English architect based in London, uh, uh, that they made uh, from like 20 years uh, in, in practice, they, they've been made in sustainable architecture science then. And so I thought it was important to, to share the expertise as it's not, they weren't doing that by you know, by heart, not because it was cool now to do it. And um, and so, and we talk about a school, educational projects. Uh, that is a topic that I really, I'm really interested. And then uh, we had um, a, a engineer and that they, they developed here in Denmark, a new uh, bio-based uh, construction wall uh, materials and basically to, to to substitute uh, to 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 avoid the concrete uh, prefab concrete structure and to make it in a, into more uh, sustainable one and then uh, we had um, a teacher from the academy of copenhagen um, and he is a really good teacher uh, and we ha- he had a lot of knowledge and he ran a program postgraduate program about uh, how to um, preserve 
the old buildings and the culture connected to old buildings uh, into the future. Uh, how to make it? How to make renovation in a in a good way? Let's say not not destroying uh, the past. And then the last one uh, is as well was is as well a Danish uh, company, but is uh, founded by two Italians, two engineers, um, and they uh, start to help Danish companies in the into the early stage design. That means they they create uh, uh, simulation and digital through digital tools uh, about uh, wind, sun, uh, energy. Um, energy how to, to to save energy in yeah they, they they really collaborated together with architects and what's super interesting because right now i guess we miss the interdisciplinarity into the into our fields and uh, probably instead of stay on silos we need to kind of work together mm -mm. yeah this is yeah. also my opinion because um i think you can learn not only from each other expertise but also from each other approach and maybe take some approach like as you said you were doing the pro group of chris doe which is basically more focused on graphic designers let's say but um, there are so many there are so many thoughts that you can take uh, from there and uh, and apply them in into architecture and uh, have you planned uh, like a certain um, number of episodes or are yeah. you planning to do it <laughs> ongoing or is there like an end and then you no. stop for a while? <laughs> no, there is a end. <laughs> uh, it's quite time consuming, energy consuming, but I mean, it's a fun experience. I don't know what it's going to take, but yeah, but there are going to be two more. Two more. So now we're at number five, it was, so seven. Yeah, seven. Uh, is it already announced who will be the last two guests or? Yeah, I have uh, two guests I'm working on. <laughs> I'm working on two, uh, one office that is based in, uh, in uh, Belgium, that, but is uh, run from two Italians. And uh, the, the last one or, you know, the, the final one will be uh, a really talent and expert Danish architect that is, um, she's, uh, she has also a PhD, PhD uh, in communication and uh, how, and also in the, in, the, in the sustainability process. And we will work about how it's important for us as an architect to be communicative and to, to communicate in the right way from the beginning to all the stakeholders. Because if we don't communicate and if we don't take up our stand from the beginning, um, we the, the 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 risk is to lose the role and to lose the meaning of the project so we are going to talk about that uh, also related to how to make a sustainable project and how do you find the uh, how do you find these people how did you know them before or did you look for them online what is what makes you find the people and how do you approach them um as I just say, I, I like to connect with people and I have a, a huge network on LinkedIn. Um, probably is because in, in the last nine years, I just start to, to create a connection in that sense, uh, both face to face, but also digital one. And so I, I check them on LinkedIn and I contact them directly. Just, yeah, really easy. <laughs> well, then, um, uh, I, I will stay tuned in and uh, I'll re re rewatch the things that I didn't watch online live mm -hmm. because uh, most of the time you do it on, I think, Tuesdays at four mm -hmm. Central European time. Mm -hmm. um, and if I'm at work and I'm doing some task <laughs> that doesn't uh, require me uh, writing emails or calling people, then I would put some earbud <laughs> on and listen to it uh, but i think it's also nicer to take your time because it's there is people sharing their screens they show stuff so you really need to to take your time and and um i wish that uh, these first seven episodes were just uh, the first uh, bigger chapter but there will be <laughs> further chapters after all after that uh <laughs> i we can if I if I have some people that I know that might be interesting to talk to, I will I will tell you. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
So I, <laughs> I will put also all the links in the description of the podcast and on Instagram so that people can can join. I even shared the first one when you were uh, starting because I <laughs> yeah. I always support uh, <laughs> unconditionally everyone who starts something interesting, even if it's even if it was something that's not interesting to me, but they're starting it, I always want to show support. <laughs> Thank um, you. But I want to conclude our interview with also like a, a wrap up of the of the topic Denmark because I think that a lot of people I know personally really really want to go to to work in Denmark. Uh, I'm like I would like to, but it's not like really really I would be going crazy about it. But uh, <laughs> it's still going to be interesting. If you can sum up some suggestions or some tips, what should people do to prepare? Should they first come? just move to Denmark and start working something else just to be there and then transition to architecture or I don't know what, now that you have this experience, what would be your suggestion for someone who wants to move from abroad to Denmark? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have just finished with your studies, uh, I suggest to, to find out if in your country there is a, some kind of program that can support also economically uh, an internship. And uh, the internship is the first step um, to, I believe, to, to start and to, to be known into the offices because the market is quite close, um, but not because they are bad people. It's because... Um, there are a lot of talented junior architects uh, coming from the two schools of architecture here, and uh, they have already inside the, the system, the education system, a program of being entered into offices. So that's why it's even more difficult for foreigners to, to jump in, because there is already a program for Danish architects. But in general, just try to figure out if there is any program um, that can support you economically from your country. Prepare, of course, a, a portfolio and a CV and explain that you, you want to move here and you are interested to move here. Um, if you are a bit more senior architect, so you have already experience in other countries or in your countries, I, I suggest to um, list your uh, experience in a, in a good CV and explain exactly what was your role in the previous experience and also don't don't mention just the hard skill just mention also the soft skill so if you have been in charge of communication if for example you have you are from us for example just say that which was your role in the office and also from which cities because maybe danish architect wants to expand in some other places so you are the contact uh, the local one in that sense. So be be really clear of uh, from where are you from and how and what can you provide to them in in a broad sense, not just architecture skills. Um, and yeah, that's uh, it, of course you need to be here to start working. But there are some international offices that hire people also from abroad, and they can ask you to to move here after the you know if you got the job. If you get the job, is it a thing to start learning Danish before arriving there? Would uh, that be helpful, or it's completely different, difficult? I mean, I've been there uh, as someone that speaks German. You can understand a lot by reading, but the pronunciation is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But for example, for German architects, I mean, Denmark works works really a lot with Germany, and they have a lot of projects in Germany. So, I mean, you just play your cards that you are German and you can you learn, you know, the language, you know, the rules, so you know, if you are a senior architect, let's say. So in that sense, you can be a resourceful uh, uh, resource, uh, a good one, you know. <laughs> that's, uh, that's great advice. Well, Danila, um, I really wish all the best for your lives and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to see how the project is going to develop as uh, also someone that not only now has been a guest on the podcast, but also a, a listener. You know that we always go at the end with a positive note of inspiration. So what, what are some things that uh, you uh, consume to get inspired, whether it's a book, movie, mm -hmm. podcast, TV shows, you can say whatever it's at the top of your <laughs> head. 
yeah, I love to combine my uh, evening uh, walking, running activity with a podcast or with a YouTube, you know, with a audio uh, uh, file. So when I want to have, you know, a good time and relax, I just uh, I just take a, a run or a, a 45 minutes walk. And uh, and with a with a good lecture or good pod podcast like this one, and um, I have two lectures to to suggest that I used to watch over and over. It's it's really weird that I used. I mean, there are some things that I used to watch and listen over and over because they help me to reflect. And uh, yeah, they are architecture topic, so I mean, quite boring thing, but they are not so boring. Um, there is this Italian architect that um, she's uh, Francesca Torzo, and uh, she has a few lectures on YouTube that I really suggest because she is uh, an architect. She's really she talk she's uh, she has a huge culture, uh, a huge knowledge of culture of uh, you know she's a is a is a is I believe that is a, a really phenomenal architect and person. So every time I want to reflect over my work and over why I'm doing that, I listen to her. And the second one is um, uh, two architects that are from uh, Switzerland, I guess, that I, I don't know how to pronounce them correctly, but uh, I can give you the link. Lucien Patmanavan, <laughs> but I don't know if that's correct. And uh, they are really serious architects in their architecture because they are really uh, Swiss architect, architect, but their approach to architecture is so hilarious. It's so fun. And uh, I love when architects approach, uh, they work with such a humor and not really, you know, serious, uh, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, in a serious way. So I, I suggest this too. And, um, yeah <laughs> for sure i'll be sharing the links uh and um thank you very much for your time and have a good <laughs> thank you weekend too. <laughs> you too bye. bye 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 hey there thank you very much for watching the full podcast episode if you want to watch more of this just check the video here and don't forget to subscribe here thank you very much have a good one bye